we're having, that's this Tuesday, we're having the, the rosary at 545 for this uh, person on death row, Carmen Deck. So it will be, rosary will be said at 6 p.m. in English and 7 p.m. in Spanish. Communion ministers, lectors, altar servers, hospitality ministers, and sacristans, you should have received a very important email that states effective next weekend, May 7th and 8th, the, all the normal things that we do at Mass before the COVID are coming back. So please check your email and make sure you have all the information before next weekend. So everything will be back to normal, except we're all a couple years older, a little bit less hair, and still no wine, still no precious blood. You know, I, I did hear that in the Diocese of Salina, they have it, but we don't have that bishop, so we still don't. So say a prayer. Someday we'll get that back. Okay, do we have any birthdays? Back here, when's your birthday, Zoe? April 12th, happy birthday. May 2nd, Monday, happy birthday. Is that it? Who? Oh, back here. Oh, <laughs> when's yours? April 20th. April 20th. Yeah, you and Hitler. <laughs> that's, that's my sister's birthday and Hitler's. <laughs> I know that because it's my sister's birthday. She's the Hitler in our family. <laughs> no. Don't worry about that. My brother's is April 30th. That's today. This Wednesday. This Wednesday. Happy birthday. 16? Sweet 16. All right. Anniversaries? Which? Who's first? How many years? 61. Congratulations. May the 6th, 27, congratulations. Is that it? Back here? But you got an anniversary? Okay, well, congratulations on your engagement. Okay, are we streaming this? Nope, okay, let's get going. Please take out your gather hymnal and we'll begin by singing number 521, Christ is risen, shout Hosanna, 521. Please stand. Christ is risen, shout Hosanna, celebrate this day of days. Christ is risen, Tears, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My brothers and sisters, in our gospel today, Jesus refers to the disciples as children and cares for them with tender love. May this water remind us that we each share this special relationship of love with God as his children. May this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter received their baptism. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Happy birthday. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain of the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses to these things as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in numbers and they cried out in a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. Everything in the universe cried out to the one who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, 
but the disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When, Peter, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came into the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, seeing that ambulance out there makes me even more grateful for all of our first responders. I'm sure you all feel the same way. I remember very vividly the very first time that I had to call 911. I'll never forget it. It was during the summertime, and uh, all the kids were off school, and there was a couple of boys in the neighborhood, about 14 or 15 years old. We were used to seeing them playing and had become acquainted with them. We knew their names. And uh, they decided one afternoon they were going to pull out the barbecue grill and make something to eat. So I was watching them do this. And they made a little charcoal fire there and were going to put some hot dogs or something on it. And they got to playing with the fire and squirting the charcoal starter fluid into the fire and watching the flames shoot up. I used to be that age. I, I kind of know the fascination with fire. And so it's dangerous, but it's very useful. But the boys made a kind of a bad decision there to play with the fire. And the wind kind of blew up and blew that charcoal fluid all over the front of the house. And pretty soon there was uh, large flames engulfing the front of that house. So I grabbed my phone, called 911, and the boys grabbed a garden hose and started kind of spraying the fire. Pretty soon the fire truck was there and they got the fire under control pretty quickly. There wasn't a lot of damage and no one was hurt. But the interesting thing is what happened next. Um, the boys were standing there kind of, kind of looking ashamed and kind of afraid because they kind of knew they were in big trouble. And they looked at those firefighters and I think they had a little bit of fear in them. So those two young firefighters began to talk to those two boys. And they talked and they talked and they talked some more and they talked quite a while. I was a little bit out of earshot so I couldn't make out the whole conversation but pretty soon you could tell the boys weren't frightened anymore and they were very calm and they began to look at those firefighters and they were listening to every word that they said. 
And it was very interesting to me to watch how that developed. And they spent about an hour there with the boys. And I thought, well, they could have jumped in the fire truck and headed back to the station and had some time off, but they, they knew that there was something better that they could do here. They saw a teaching moment, and so they kind of mentored those boys, you know, explaining to them how dangerous this was and that they were getting older and they needed to make better decisions and things like that. And it was a very good uh, exchange. I was very impressed with those two firefighters. And it kind of reminded me of Peter. Um, the type of decisions he makes was similar to those boys. Sometimes Peter, and we, when we see in the Gospels, he makes these impulsive decisions. He jumps into things really quickly and then he jumps right out. He's hot and he's cold. He makes decisions and then he changes his mind. He says things that he shouldn't say and wishes he could take them back maybe. So um, I think there's a lot of people, well, we, we kind of know Peter's got his flaws. He's got a little bit of a reputation, but I think some people view Peter as being incompetent or kind of foolish. Uh, myself, I don't see it that way. I see Peter as being very average. I see him being very normal. He's not above average and he's not below average. He's just right there in the middle. He kind of reminds me of me and maybe some of you as well. And I think Jesus saw the potential in Peter. He could see that uh, he was a diamond in the rough. There was some work to be done. And so he had a lot of confidence in Peter. And he, indeed, indeed, he made him the chief apostle of all the 12 that he handpicked. And also, he gave him the keys to the kingdom of heaven. But you know, if you remember at the Last Supper, when Jesus had all his confidants around him, his inner circle, and he told them um, that somebody was going to betray him, they were a little bit surprised. They, they thought, well, we're your, we're your closest confidants. Who among us would betray you? Well, Peter was the first one to step forward and say, Lord, I'll never turn away from you. I'll always be there for you. I'm always going to be your guy. And so Jesus kind of turned and looked at him and, and looked in his eye and stopped in his tracks. And he said, Peter, before the sun even comes up tomorrow, before the cock crows, you are going to deny me three times. And Peter was stunned to silence. He didn't know quite what to say. Well, true enough, about two or three hours later, Jesus is arrested by the Roman soldiers at the request of the Sanhedrin, and he's brought over to his mock trial. Well, word got out pretty quickly that Jesus was arrested, so all of his followers scattered, and they had headed for the hills thinking that they would be next. And Peter was no different. He found a place to run and hide to where he could still watch what was going on. So he went into the courtyard of the Praetorium and kind of hid in among the crowd. And there was a group of people that are warming their hands over a charcoal fire. And pretty quickly, three of those people recognized him as a follower of Christ. But he denied it three times to all three of them. Not only that he was not a follower, but that he didn't even know him. So about that time, he looks up and there's, Peter, uh, there's Jesus being brought in under guard. He's got chains around him and he's more or less handcuffed like a common criminal being brought into the praetorium to stand before the Sanhedrin and eventually before Pilate. So at that time, Peter looks up and sees him and their eyes meet. Uh, Jesus looks over into the crowd and spots Peter and Peter looks into the Lord's eyes and instantly he realizes what he has done, that he's denied the Lord and at that moment, as the sun is coming up on the horizon, they can hear the cock crowing. Peter's heart sinks and his face drops into his hands and he says, Lord, I'm sorry. He says it within his heart because they're so far apart, Jesus couldn't hear him. But Jesus looks into his eyes and sees that he's truly sorry. So Peter, the one who's impulsive, who's rash and who doesn't think things through, also very quickly turns it back around and gives himself right back to the Lord. He owns up to his mistakes and his failings. He doesn't make excuses or rationalize it or offer any explanations. He immediately turns to the Lord and comes back to him. And this is one of the things that the Lord sees in Peter. He sees that that passion that he has will eventually, through the grace of God, be turned into courage. And in today's reading, we see another example where they have that encounter, and Peter has gone out fishing, which is very strange because he has put his nets aside
to follow the Lord. What's he doing back on a fishing boat? What, what has happened there? Did he give up on the Lord? Did the whole Jesus thing not work out? Well, Peter impulsively gave up on that um, idea of following the Lord, even though he had seen that he was risen. And so they were fishing all night and going from one end of the lake to the other all through the night and didn't catch a single fish. They had plenty of time to realize that maybe fishing, returning back to that career, might not have been the best idea. And so they see a guy on shore building a fire. And at that time, John recognizes that it's the Lord, and Peter does too. So he jumps in quickly, impulsively, into the water and swims 100 yards to shore. And as he comes up out of the water, their eyes meet again, just like they did in that Praetorian court. And Peter, it dawns on him at that moment, I've given up on you, Lord. I've went back to my nets and to my fishing when I committed to come and follow you full time. So he's expecting to get a chewing out, um, much like those two boys and the firefighters as they had their discussion over the fire as well. And those two boys were met with mercy and compassion and patience. And Peter experienced the same thing because the Lord says to him, Peter, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep. Come, Peter, and be the shepherd of my people. I need you to do that. I need you to do it full time. And so again, Peter returns to the Lord and bit by bit, Simon Peter becomes Saint Peter. It takes a while for all of us to reach that point. And so Peter is a great example for you and for me on never giving up and drawing into closer friendship with Jesus. He'll always accept us back. He's very patient and he's very kind. And if Peter can do it, so can any of us. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us, for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come, amen. We know that just as Jesus provides for the needs of his disciples, Jesus will also provide for us. With confidence, we raise our prayers to our God of life and love. For the church, that all shepherds within the church may take Jesus' command to heart and feed the flock with patient understanding and love, we pray to the Lord. For Pope Francis, that God will strengthen and inspire him as he leads the church in seeking the reign of God, deepening our loving service and growing in unity as God's family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of life, that all may form their consciences and participate in the political process to ensure a society that protects life at all stages. We pray for a stay of execution for Carmen Deck, who faces execution this Tuesday. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
for those newly initiate, initiated into our parish and for all the children who are celebrating their first communions this Easter season. May they find love and support as they gather to worship with this community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this assembly, casting our nets in faith and hope, may we know the risen Lord who prospers our work and prepares a table for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who glorified God in life and in death, especially Dennis Schmidt and Paul Kottenbrock, may their voices blend with the song of all who surround the throne of the Lamb. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you know everything. You know our needs. Yet we raise them as we strive to grow in relationship with you. Hear our prayers that one day we may glorify you in your heavenly kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. We sing together number 624, Lift Up our, Your Hearts to the Lord, number 624. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into, her, into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your children. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Please say the word and my soul shall be healed. We sing together number 928. Take and eat this bread. 928.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. We go forth singing number 797, You Walk Along Our, Shore, our Shoreline, number 797.